monocot and dicot plants. Flowering plants known as angiosperms are the most diverse group of land plants in the planet. The angiosperms spread across the world with at least 260,000 living species classified into 453 families. Traditionally, flowering plants have been divided into two major groups or classes on the basis of the number of cotyledons present in the seed. These two groups are the monocots and dicots. A cotyledon is a central portion of a seed embryo to which the epicotyl and radical are attached. Plants that are monocots have one cotyledon and dicots have two cotyledons. To gain a better understanding of the various features of monocots and dicots, we will now study two plants, one a monocot and the other a dicot. To do the experiment we will require an orchid plant that is a monocot and a hibiscus plant that is a dicot. Procedure Ensure that both the plants you've taken have roots, leaves and flowers. Study the leaves of both the plants carefully by observing their venation. If the leaves have parallel venation, then the plant is a monocot and if the leaves have reticulate venation, the plant is a dicot. In our case, the venation of the orchid leaf is parallel so it is a monocot and the venation of the hibiscus leaf is reticulate so it is a dicot. There is another characteristic that helps differentiate a monocot and a dicot. If the leaves have a stalk, then the plant is a dicot and if the leaves have no stalk, the plant is a monocot. When the leaf has no stalk, we call it sessile, meaning the leaf is attached directly by its base without a stalk. In an orchid plant, the leaf is sessile so it is a monocot. The leaves of the hibiscus have a stalk so it's a dicot. If you now take a look at the roots of both the plants and study the root system, you will see that roots differ in a monocot and a dicot. The monocot plant has just a bunch of roots. This type of root system is known as the adventitious root. The dicot plants has a tap root system. We can see that the orchid plants have an aerial root system. Aerial roots are almost always adventitious. So for the orchid plant, there's another vote for being a monocot. The hibiscus has a taproot system as seen in other dicot plants. Let us now move on to the stem. If you carefully observe the stem of both the plants, you will see that the orchid has a weak stem. Whereas the hibiscus has a strong stem. Monocots normally have a weak stem and dicots have both weak and strong stems. Looking at our plants, the weak stem makes the orchid a monocot and the strong stem makes the hibiscus a dicot. Let's now carefully observe different parts of the orchid and hibiscus flowers. If you count the number of petals and sepals, you will find that the monocot flowers tend to have number of parts that are divisible by 3 and the dicot flowers have number of parts that are divisible by 4 or 5. In orchids, there are three petals and three sepals. One of the petals is modified to form a labellum or lip. Overall, an orchid satisfies the condition for a monocot plant. The hibiscus has five petals and five sepals like a typical dicot plant. From these observations, we can conclude that the orchid is a monocot and the hibiscus is a dicot plant.